What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to our exciting episode of Attack and Productions, where today we're presenting our next installment of Time Wars. In today's particular matchup, I'm being joined by both Adam and Jake as we kind of represent the fight, one of the probably greatest fights in early Dragon Ball history, Goku taking on Vegeta. Vegeta and Nappa hit the planet, they took care of all the other warriors, Goku's arrived, and now it's kind of like a one-on-one -on -one fight. And in this show, it kind of gave Goku the win, kind of did a draw, but we're going to give us a true victor in this particular matchup, and we're going to get into it about right now. What's going on, guys? Shout out to Yajirobe, the real hero of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I was just thinking of something I could say about Yajirobe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Both these decks came out in set 15, and I think at the shop, when they first came out, no one but me touched them. So, I knew I was going to be in this matchup to some degree. I didn't know who I was going to be playing against until we got actually into it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these um, a lot of these archetypes and, and cards, you'll, you'll see us quite often spend some time reading the text, because <laughs> they're not, at least on my end, I, I, I'm not used to playing this Vegeta deck. Um, is it, is this your first time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's both these actually were, were interesting. So it's uh, aka you're playing Tax Jita, I'm playing the Kaioken Goku deck. Um which both have a level of being able to kind of just play cards out to some degree, but they they both have the problem of their own hand size. I remember when I played both these decks, I think in the end I did prefer the Kaioken Goku over uh, Takshida, and but Takshida got a lot of support that helped it out a lot. I don't know if you actually ran those cards or not. If you didn't have them, you, you should have borrowed them from me. But we'll, we'll let the match <laughs> play out and see what happens. Yeah, the uh, once again the parameters of this uh, format, which I mean, I think it would be kind of cool to have it as a format. Um, it's going to be mostly uh, archetype driven or event driven, character driven as well. About 80%, 75 to 80% of our deck is going to be dedicated to that. Uh, and we are not able to play SCRs to try to keep the decks kind of even and not just have it be like a boss monster kind of a fight, which a lot of these matches turn out to be. So for a quick, um, for memory purpose for people, uh, Kaioken Goku starts the, card, starts the game with the field card. In the field card, you need to put the uh, trainings underneath it. Uh, there are four in the deck, and you could pretty much pay for one to do it and then the uh, field card itself will also pull one from areas and then there's a King Kai that will pull one as well and once you get four underneath the field card then you can start maximizing this deck's potential especially when you play the unison which allows you to pretty much bottom deck a card and initially draw two so it's a plus one draw but you're cycling a card out of your hand that you don't need in particular uh, moments which is kind of good but the deck does fall flat on certain parts. So there's parts of the deck that will give you uh, either your Gokus or just one particular card will gain a great power boost. And then during the next turn, which is your opponent's follow-up turn, you have minuses that's occurring. So it's kind of like big reward, <laughs> high risk type situations. Yeah. And the Vegeta deck is it's kind of the antithesis of that, right? It's, it's um, you're trying to get... Uh, your opponent to hit your blocker card so that you can basically grow into a bigger ape card. Uh, but there's also an effect on the Vegeta leader uh, that if it's your opponent's turn, when one of your battle cards is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill, you get to draw a card and then your opponent chooses a card in their hand and then discards it. So there's some light hand control involved, which is why it's often called Tax Cheetah. Yeah. So we've already established kind of buffer field cards, which, well, I have now have, I think, four cards now. But you got yours out there, which is very important for you to start getting kind of rolling. Because if you lose a Vegeta, um, either by me attacking into it or popping it with a skill, you have ways of playing Ape right afterwards, just depending on the situation at hand. Uh, this Gregor, yeah. I forgot about this Gregor. This Gregor is really sneaky because okay. it gives initial, like, it gives a huge power boost to your uh, leader, if I recall correctly, for yeah. one energy. I think it's like plus 10 or plus 15 or something like that. And it, it, because we were so heavy into these particular decks that were almost designed to play against each other, um, you know, it, it was it was interesting playing with some of these older cards where you realize how far we've come in the reduction of, of overall cost to play cards. Uh, like the field, you, you still have to pay one to be able to evolve into your bigger ape, whereas 
I think if that card was made a little bit, you know, uh, earlier in sets, or sorry, later in sets, um, there probably wouldn't be a, a an energy cost associated with it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you would you would start the game with it in play, or yep. it would like put apes underneath it from the deck, and then play an ape when a guy dies. Or like you know, it'd be way less energy intensive. Or yeah, or you wouldn't have to have it in your hand to play it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. You search for it. <laughs> so he I had a quick question about this particular moment. Uh, you have an open energy for it, which you you could have blocked with this Vegeta. Um, you could have, yeah, you could have just blocked this Vegeta. And I see you had an ape in your hand. You could have put, done a follow up. Was the reason why you were trying to hold off? Were you were you unsure how aggressive I could have been? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. It was just my lack of knowledge of, of what, really what your deck is trying to do. Uh, so just a bit of trepidation because I, I know that green is really good at getting rid of battle cards. Um, and once I have that great ape, uh, there's nothing for it to change into. So yeah. I was trying to bide my time a little bit. And I wanted to clarify real quick there was one role an extra one we put into this matchup. Uh, we both play field cards. We both need field cards for both these decks to, ru- uh, to run. So we made a truce that you cannot play Tactical Assault That's Vegeta. A- <laughs> <laughs> tactical Vegeta, yeah. Um, it, it would be perfect oh, yeah. for your deck, but because we want to also, in this moment, maximize the deck's potentials, we did an extra roll for this one match. Like, hey, we both need yeah. field cards. We cannot put the field destroyer cards in the deck. Yeah, that would be because you guys are both in green. That would be hilarious. You both just <laughs> yeah. blow up each other's field card. So yeah, turns instantly into a set one or two <laughs> uh, deck. <laughs> so yeah. a big confusion here. Um, this is actually misplay. Um, I popped only one of your cards using dormant because the ape could be played when uh, from your hand when one of your non great ape Vegetas is KO'd by a skill that card has to have blocker. So I didn't choose your blocker. The field card says, though, when one of your non-grade 8 Saiyans is KO'd by an attack, then you can play an ape from your deck. Uh, Vegeta, your super combo, was not actually KO'd by an attack. So we got this Vegeta, this ape out a little bit early. But hey, maybe that's just Vegeta's pride pushing through. I don't know, but that was a misplay I wanted to point out right here. Yeah, it was, uh, I, I got the, I mean, you did get rid of one of my super combos, so, I mean, I think that it's a, a net zero. <laughs> yeah, it, it's also, like, I don't know, I, I think Bancroft and I uh, were talking about it before, and he was looking at the audio, and at one point he did say he was going to pop both of them, and then, like, was like, oh, wait a minute, no, and it just, like, was a confusing moment. Yeah. So it very well could have happened, you know, like, so here, this is us actually, I think, catching it in real time, possibly. Or maybe not. Maybe was, I was just going over. I'm like, oh, okay, I did block that one. And I yeah, said, I think that we did go over it. Yeah. And at this point, I was like, it, it just let it stay. It's fine. Yeah. I, I don't remember yeah. exactly. We, we recorded this before Gen Con. I don't remember, remember the, in the moment what was happening. But, uh. We did right, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, so, I think that eventually we we kind of resolved it. Yeah, oh, just a little skip in the time stream there, everybody. Everything's fine. So misplay All fix. Well. Uh, this Kaioken Goku. Um, I forgot how much I love this engine. So it goes from the two. Uh, and I think you warp it, if I recall correctly, uh, mm-hmm. to play a three drop from the bottom of your deck, and I had to use the unison to put the three drops there. And then you play the five drop on top of the three drop. And the five drop is the one who has the ability where it's like uh, get a power boost, but then you neg your leader and whatnot. Um, now, it states at the beginning of your opponent's turn and battle power like will still carry over. So like the neg will still, if I recall correctly, will still be there regardless if I awaken or not. It's been a bit. On your leader? Yeah. yeah. So here, uh, it's a hybrid, so I'm just I go ahead and awaken, just get the energy back up to kind of continue pushing during this turn. Yeah, I thought that was one of the more interesting mechanics out of that set, is those Goku cards kind of powering up and then being weakened after, like, just the same way Kaioken works in yeah. the show. And it's one of those things I actually really do enjoy about 
um, some of these archetypes they break out that we get to, they do add those extra flavor to it. And I know like we've, uh, we talked a little bit about in our going over uh, the new Broly that's coming out set 22, how like that field card works well because it's really, it works well into the theme of what it's, it, what it is. And then when it's gone, you have to get rid of all the bios because like, it's just how it was. Yeah, uh, I like when they do that with card games. Yes, it kind of makes archetype less feasible in a sense because people are like, I don't want to play with this because there's a huge like tax on that part. I will say, speaking of flavor text, um, the fact that these two leaders basically go tit for tat um, when they're attacking each other. If your opponent's life is more than what you've got, you get an extra 5k. So it's it was really cool to kind of see the, the the foray between the two leaders, just like in the anime, where it's like, yeah, you hit me a little bit, but I'm going to get a little bit stronger so that it, we kind of become even again. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you know, seeing these two leaders awakened uh, across from each other is just super fun to look at. So this deck is actually one of the few times I uh, thought about the Tenkaichi series, which uh, one of the games had where you could alternate the timelines. And I included Gohan's in the deck because Gohan was there in the moment this was happening. Uh, I did put one card in my deck that was a Super Saiyan Goku. And I, I said, if you KO one of my Gohans, if I have the opportunity to play this Super Saiyan Goku, I will play it. It's the idea that you killed the Goku's son and he kind of just explodes into a Super Saiyan. Just for, you know, <laughs> a little bit of flavor from my, my inspiration. And also, Yajirobi, speaking of which, I, I warped the card. But it works really well in this matchup, and I only incorporate it because Yanjirobi was there during the moment. Yeah. I don't know, you're, you're technically within the rules of the format, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and a little uh, a little stretch on my end, too, is uh, the Super Saiyan Blue uh, Vegeta, because that's eventually what he becomes. <laughs> Yeah, I think if it's, like, the same character, you know, you get a little bit of, of grace with that, you know. Yeah. And, and technically, that would still work with um, the whole uh, field card. And ape, cause it's it's a non-grade ape Vegeta or Saiyan. So, like, you can still bring out an ape afterwards if this card is dealt with by any means, which is pretty cool. Yeah, little tech choice. So here I go straight into the Evolve because uh, I need to be in active mode to maximize its ability and does not uh, play in active, unfortunately. So, and here you could have, if you had an ape, you could have um, played one, potentially. But I don't think you had, uh, I don't think you had one in your hand for it. But Majin Buu yeah. works just the same in this case because, like I said, <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, this, these two decks are so thin on the hand, even though it looks like you have a great hand, and I really yeah. don't. I don't think I'm. Uh, I can continue pushing anymore, and I end up just passing the turn. Yeah, that Majin Buu was uh, one of my ten cards for tech. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I only played the one too. I don't think I played more than one, but uh, it came in handy. I mean, you've been tormented twice this game, man. It's time you get, <laughs> it's time you play a floodgate bag. <laughs> that that scene didn't happen until next arc. Yeah. So, um, I will end up, like I said, I think passing. Uh, go ahead and warp. All right, it's in, it's in the turn effect. To just replay the, the two drop. Yeah. It, wh where is your. Do you feel like you're behind by any chance right now, or do you feel so comfortable in this matchup? I had kind of this. I had double mind, I think, a little bit because my hand wasn't too bad. Um, and then you know, I don't necessarily think your hand was super strong. Um, so I was hoping to be able to kind of chop you down little by little. Um, but I, I, I couldn't find the main engine. So I was basically just kind of having to improvise every single turn and that I, I, I don't like playing like that. Yeah. And it, real quick, having to be able to swing your 10 K must've felt great because <laughs> I'm like five K right now, I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. So and I, I often have a hard time deciding whether to go with the unison or just try to, you know, go directly at life. But once again, we're we're pretty close. We're both at the three life, which is is essentially the way the entire game went. Yeah. 
I think as a general rule, attacking the unison is a good move if you're going to put your opponent on cards over you by giving them a bunch of life in a turn. Yeah. And you have a bunch of attacks that are just going to be like wasted otherwise. And then, you know, those could always end up fishing a negate out of your opponent's hand. And then that's kind of like what you are looking for anyway. So now this, uh, yeah. I established Vegeta's dad coming in, save the day. So it's great. Cu- yeah, but it doesn't get used nearly enough. I am, I am curious. So yeah, you did play it. You do tap out for it, which now at this point, I'm like, okay, cool. He can have a Frieza. He can have a Dormant ready to go whenever he needs it. Um, but I did feel a little bit comfortable going into potentially turn six and you being tapped out. Yeah, if you yeah. if you Dormant me, then that just means I have a ton of energy for your, your crackback in a sense, and hopefully that's enough to defend myself. Yeah, it was uh, it was a calculated risk because I I knew that I needed to get something going, and that felt like a really good unison to kind of establish a bit of um, a bit of a red herring because uh, I don't think that I played I I think I played a couple of two charismatics, um, but I I you know I knew that having a green unison out there would at least give you a bit of pause uh, and maybe you know play a little more cautiously. I may not have put freezes in here. We'll see, because I think that I was... I felt like I was doing my boy Vegeta wrong by putting his oppressor in the deck. Um, <laughs> Actually, so. I, I think because like, I don't play Charismatic Bill in my deck. Um, yeah. I think you actually mentioned I think we talked about it. I think you did say that like Vegeta wouldn't want Frieza's assistance or something like that. Yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I go straight for the three pay to evolve instead uh, because I just didn't have a three drop anymore and just kind of clear out your board and kind of go for these attacks and it looks like you have a homicidal clone in your hand yeah good old clones no it, it comes in handy you're at yeah. two life now once again we're even up again mm-hmm. and I'm at the situation yeah. where okay cool if I swing to unison he may not block it Yeah, I I, I, cho- I think you choose not to block it because you know the double strikes a little more threat. You want to hang on for your blocker for that card instead. But old Vegeta the Cruel man, yeah. I miss that card. <laughs> I miss when it was relevant. <laughs> oh, it was so good when it came out too. Top of the Trickster that uh, the Gohan, the Super Saiyan Gohan. Yeah. Was so good. Even the even the red Goku, the Kaioken Goku, saw a little bit of play. Nice. Mock speed. Mm-hmm. Here, I'm really just debating on how to push this because I want to get the double strike in on you, but I don't know if I want to tap out to do it or not. So eventually, I just bait it just so you don't have it as a combo piece. If only that was a Vegeta blocker. Yeah. But I guess it wouldn't matter because I don't have the energy for it. Once again, a, a tale of the times. But I will say this did feel really bad. Um, and I had no other two drops in the warp because it plays the card only from the warp. But um, having to play that card and immediately just say pretty much denying it hurts a lot because now my leader once again is five instead of 15. Now, granted... I think I could give it a activate battle a plus effect by pitching one of the card underneath the field card and spin a bit. But the main point of this leader is giving it, I think, a 40k power boost by pitching all four from underneath the field card, which is an activate main speed, unfortunately. And I just have to wait for an opportunity to kind of get that out. And how was your... I don't remember if your hand size was... Not good. <laughs> yeah. So okay. w- one of the other benefits actually for the unison is that when your leader's power is reduced, you get to reset the unison. The unison has blocker or it gains blocker one or the other. Um, and it doesn't lose power until the start of the next turn. So as soon as your turn starts, it goes down. It, the unison restands. I'm able to block it now. 
and just having my own homicidal clone comes out now. Grant, I did have to warp two cards for the process, but I think it's uh, it was worth the trade. Yeah. And, and you did tap out once again for this. Yeah, I'm starting to see a trend and maybe some ways <laughs> that I can improve the way I play. <laughs> But I do see uh, a dormant in your hand finally. Uh, so we know that's coming my way. Yeah, that uh, that Vegeta that I have is an old card as well. I mean, that's but it's nice. It's a twenty k double striker. Um, when this card attacks, your opponent chooses two cards in their hand, sends it to their warp. And there, I was trying to bait out in the gate. You didn't do one, so now I know I'm safe to. I've already procced, I think, the card on the field to give the leader a boost. It, or maybe it might be all Gokus. But now I just activated the main on the Goku, which gave the additional power boost. And I'm just swinging for game. Like, you're tapped out. You have no more negates. Uh, or you have no ability for negates because uh, you have one life. And I'm just going for it now. Yeah, well, I'm pretty bad at using those dormant potentials. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Even if you would have used it on the the five drop, it's crit. So you're still having to, you're forced to still take that, and I still activate the battle regardless to give it the uh, the power boost on top of it. But that is uh, today's matchup. It looks like Goku was silly, but kind of push Vegeta off of Earth to some degree. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. And uh, bye. And for our next video.